Celiac disease is a digestive disorder that damages the small intestine. People with celiac disease should not eat gluten, which is the protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. If people with celiac disease continue to eat gluten, it can cause them long-term digestive problems. Especially in children, active celiac disease can prevent them from growing and getting all the nutrients they need to thrive. In addition, this can cause them an increased risk of iron deficiency, poor bone health, infertility, other autoimmune conditions, and intestinal cancers in the long term. Celiac disease is not an allergy, so your child will not require an EpiPen or any special medication to treat it. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease, which means that when your child eats gluten, their immune system attacks itself and causes damage to the small intestine. The exact cause of celiac disease is unknown, so the only treatment we have is to remove all gluten from your child's diet. This is sometimes also called a gluten-free diet. As celiac disease is a lifelong condition, your child will also need to avoid gluten for the rest of their lives. In Canada, the risk of having celiac disease is about one in 130 people. It can affect anyone at any age. In addition, if somebody has a child, sibling, or parent with celiac disease, then their risk increases to about one in 10. Other autoimmune conditions that are related include type 1 diabetes, Down syndrome, and autoimmune arthritis. Your child may be experiencing some common signs and symptoms of celiac disease, such as abdominal pain, bloating, and diarrhea. Sometimes children can also present with a short stature, weight loss, unexplained tiredness, which is all related to malnutrition. In addition, some other non-gastrointestinal symptoms can also include ulcers, a specific skin rash called dermatitis herpetiformis, poor attention and focus, iron deficiency, and anemia, which is a low blood count. It is possible to have celiac disease and have no symptoms at all. In fact, this may be more common than having symptoms, which is why it is important to screen individuals at risk with a blood test. Regardless of symptoms, the treatment of celiac disease is the same, which is strict adherence to a gluten-free diet. If this celiac disease is treated with strict adherence to a gluten-free diet, then the damaged tissue in the small intestine can heal, and the risk of developing long-term complications such as osteoporosis, poor growth, infertility, and intestinal cancers can all be reduced. It is important to note that because we do not know the reason why celiac disease occurs, we don't have a cure. We just have a treatment at the moment, which is the gluten-free diet. Therefore, it is really important for your child to continue avoiding gluten for the rest of their lives. If at some point they reintroduce gluten back into their diet, then ongoing intestinal damage can occur and return of their symptoms. This can also increase the risk of other health complications. Celiac disease can be diagnosed through a combination of blood test and small bowel biopsy. A biopsy is a small piece of your child's intestine that is taken while they are sleeping during an endoscopy procedure. It is very important that somebody who is being investigated for celiac disease continue to eat gluten until their biopsy and blood tests are done. If somebody with celiac disease stops eating gluten too early before the investigations, it can interfere with the doctor's ability to diagnose celiac disease. When we look at a healthy intestine under a microscope, we want to see finger-like projections called villi. These increase the surface area of the small intestine and allow the body to function and grow normally. However, in somebody with celiac disease, their villi can be flattened or damaged, and this is what can affect a child's growth and nutrition. The primary blood work marker that your doctor will monitor is something called an antitransglutaminase, also sometimes shortened to ATTG. Transglutaminase is an enzyme that your body makes that helps to fix damage. 
However, in people with celiac disease, they can develop antibodies to this transglutaminase, hence the name antitransglutaminase. A blood test that shows elevated antitransglutaminase can help your doctor make the diagnosis of celiac disease. Occasionally, a specialist doctor may decide that your child's ATTG or antitransglutaminase blood work is high enough to diagnose your child with celiac disease without needing a small bowel biopsy. The decision to diagnose your child with celiac disease based on blood work alone should be done by a specialist doctor. This is because this is complicated and can vary from province to province. In addition, this type of diagnosis is not recommended for adults with celiac disease. As your child goes on a gluten-free diet, their antitransglutaminase or ATTG blood work should be monitored on a regular basis. The goal is to see this ATTG normalize within the first two years of being on a gluten-free diet. It is important to note as well that just because somebody's ATTG level has normalized does not always mean that their small intestines have healed completely. So sometimes it is important to do a follow-up biopsy, although this is not the case in every child. If your child still has ongoing symptoms, we do not recommend having a biopsy redone within the first two years, as we know that their small intestines are still likely healing. Gluten is an elastic protein that is found in wheat, barley, rye, triticale, and their derivatives such as spelt and kamut. It is important to note that you cannot remove gluten from any of these grains, so a strict avoidance of all of these grain products is necessary for somebody with celiac disease. When gluten is hydrated with water, it results in a springy and stretchy texture that works well in baked goods such as breads and muffins. It is common for gluten-free foods to contain a variety of gluten-free flours and starches in order to replace the springy and stretchy texture of gluten. Oats themselves do not contain gluten, but they can often be at a high risk of cross-contamination with other gluten-containing grains, such as wheat, barley, and rye. Therefore, if you want to use gluten-free oats at home, we do recommend that the oats specifically say gluten-free on the label. It is important to wait until your child's symptoms or blood work have improved before introducing gluten-free oats back into their diet.